Hi, everyone. So how do we deal with the last case, case three, the top heavy case, where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator? Well, my short answer for you is that there are no HAs. But then, what is the long run behavior of the graph of such a function? Before, when we had an HJ, we knew the long run behavior. For example, in case one, y equals one over x, bottom heavy. We knew that the HJ was at the x axis, y equals zero. And in the long run, as x got extreme, basically we got y equals zero. So that told us the long run behavior of this graph and this function. But what happens in the top heavy case? Well, here's an example. It's the zoom out property. Back in section 2.3, we performed long division on this problem. This third degree polynomial divided by this second degree polynomial. This is in the top heavy case. So we know that there are no HAs. But what will be the long run behavior of this function? What happens if we try to graph this thing? Let's perform the long division. In fact, we already did it in 2.3. So when we did that, first we put these parts in descending powers. We perform the long division, the divisor on the outside, dividend on the inside. And this was at the end of this main phase where we got this polynomial quotient, 2x plus 1. We got this remainder, negative 2x minus 6. And that ultimately goes over this divisor, the 3x squared plus 1. We can ignore the 0x at this point. So when we perform the long division, we get, once again, the polynomial part, the quotient, 2x plus 1, plus the negative 2x minus 6. I popped out the negative 1 factor. So minus the fraction positive 2x plus 6 over 3x squared plus 1. That was the result of our long division. Now notice, we were dividing a third degree guy by a second degree guy. It's no wonder our quotient is first degree. The quotient we get, the polynomial piece we get here, has as its degree the difference of the degrees here. The degree of the top is 3. The degree of the bottom is 2. So the degree of the quotient is 1. It's a linear quotient. Now, what about this fraction over here? Well, if you've done your long division correctly, either your remainder is 0, or you have a piece here that does what in the long run? Hey, if you've done your long division correctly, either you get 0, or you get a situation where the top, the remainder, has as its degree a number less than the degree of the denominator. In other words, this fraction better be what? This fraction better be bottom heavy. If you've done your long division correctly, you either get 0 or you get a top, a remainder, whose degree is less than the degree of the bottom. It's a bottom heavy rational expression. And in the long run, as x approaches either infinity or negative infinity, what happens to the value of this bottom heavy guy? It's going to approach zero. Because if you graph this separately, you get an ha at y equals zero. This whole thing approaches zero in value in the long run. Because remember, HAs don't tell you about graphical properties. The HA also tells you what number, what value this thing approaches in the long run. Bottom heavy guys like these approach zero in the long run as X gets more and more extreme. So in the long run, again, as X approaches plus or minus infinity, the graph of Y equals F of X will approach, the graph of Y equals F of X will approach the graph of Y equals the quotient, 2X plus 1. Because this fraction piece either is zero or it's going to approach zero in the long run. Its impact is going to die in the long run.
and the 2x plus 1 dominates. Really, the 2x dominates. So in the long run, what should this graph look like? It should look like a line, a slanted line of slope 2. This is called a slant asymptote. Y equals 2x plus 1 is a slant asymptote, or an oblique asymptote. It's a slant or oblique asymptote. It's a slanted or tilted line that the graph approaches in the long run. Okay, now bear in mind that the graph of a rational function, a rational graph, cannot have both an SA and an HA. The only way you have an SA is if you're top heavy, in particular, if you're top heavy by how much in degree? If you're top heavy by one. So the only time you get an SA uh, is if the degree of the numerator is specifically one more than the degree of the denominator. Then the quotient is degree one, it's linear, okay? In the long run, we get that. Let's graph this. Let's graph this original guy over here using Desmos. All right. So let's graph. Y equals, parentheses, negative five plus three X squared plus six X cubed parenthesis, right arrow, parenthesis, all over, parenthesis, one plus three X squared, right arrow, parenthesis. All right, so is this graph in black? In the long run, it looks like a line, specifically the line Y equals two X plus one. Quite frankly, even the plus one doesn't matter that much, but technically the slant asymptote is Y equals two X plus one. But we know that just like y equals 2x plus 1, this graph is going to approach, uh, in, uh, y will approach infinity as x approaches infinity, like over here. y approaches infinity as x approaches infinity, and y approaches negative infinity as x approaches negative infinity. It's kind of like a snake graph almost. Well, actually, it is approaching a linear snake. It's kind of approaching a linear snake. Right. Uh, the long run behavior does not address these turning points. All right. Uh, notice here, uh, the graph actually does touch and cross over its SA. Again, there was nothing that stopped the graph from doing that. This graph does touch and cross over its own HA, um, and there's nothing that stopped it from doing it. Just like there's nothing that stopped the graph from touching or crossing over an HA. All right. Now here's my question to you. Instead of six X cubed, what if I put six X to the fourth? What if instead of six X cubed, I had six X to the fourth? If you take, hypothetically, if you take a fourth degree polynomial, and you divide it by a second degree polynomial, the quotient will be what degree? Well, the difference of the degrees, second degree, four minus two is two. A fourth degree divided by a second degree will always give you a second degree polynomial, maybe with this fraction piece over here. All right, which means in the long run, since, since you're gonna get a second degree quotient, in the long run, if we had six X to the fourth over here and the rest stayed the same, what will this graph look like in the long run if we had fourth degree over second degree? Let's take a look. Let's make this a four up here. And we get, drum roll please, we get in the long run a bowl. A bowl. Because the quotient is going to be second degree and it's going to graph uh, like a parabola. If you just graph the quotient piece, the polynomial piece, it's a parabola. In fact, some books would call uh, the quotient, an oblique asymptote. Personally, I only call lines asymptotes, but basically whatever uh, uh, corresponding parabola you get for, these, for this polynomial piece, that is the graph that this, that this graph here in black will approach. 
So if you graph y equals the quadratic here, that is the parabola that this graph will approach in the long run. The fraction piece, again, would die and approach zero. All right. So hey, folks, what if we had, uh, what if we had seventh degree over fourth degree? In the long run, what would this look like? Y equals a seventh degree polynomial over a fourth degree polynomial. Overall, what would that graph look like? Well, the quotient is going to be third degree. And you might get a fraction piece, like over here. Overall, it's going to be a snake. I'll make something up. Uh, y equals, how about x to the seventh minus 4x to the sixth plus 4. Okay. All divided by uh, uh, 3x to the fourth minus 2. I'll put a negative sign in front, just for kicks. How about that? Seventh degree divided by fourth degree. In the long run, we get a snake. Here's a falling snake. It's a falling cubic. Well, it's going to approach a falling cubic in the long run, okay? Um, close to x equals zero, it's kind of messed up. It, it's, not quite a, it's not quite like a cubic over here, but in the long run, in the long run, it's really going to re resemble a cubic. If x is out to the plus or minus millions, billions, trillions, it's basically acting like a cubic. If x is close to zero, uh, it might act less like a cubic. Like here, it's looking really flat. <laughs> All right, long run behaviors. We know everything now. In case one, so let's review these cases. In case one, y equals one over x, bottom heavy. The x-axis, y equals zero, is an HA. And it's the long run behavior of the graph. And the value of one over x in the long run approaches zero. One over, uh, uh, how about uh, two x plus one, over 3x plus 3. That approaches a horizontal line. This time it's y equals what? Y equals 2 thirds, the ratio of leading coefficients. In the long run, that's how it behaves. In the long run, these values approach 2 thirds as x gets more and more extreme. And we just talked about the top heavy cases where it graphs like a bull or a snake. Because for in the top heavy cases, you know the quotient is degree one or higher. It's a non-constant polynomial quotient. In the long run, you're going to get either a bull or a snake because the polynomial piece will be either degree one, two, three, four, five, or so forth. Non-constant polynomial. Bulls and snakes, once again. All right, so in the long run, the graph of any rational function, the graph of any rational function will either approach a line a bull or a snake in the long run, a line, a bull or a snake in the long run. 